If you want to find out how to throw farther, you came to the right place because I've been on a mission to learn the best ways to boost arm strength. And it has taken me from studying NFL quarterbacks to MLB pitchers to Olympic javelin throwers and even boxing. And what I learned could help you maximize your arm strength. Improving your technique will increase your throw distance the fastest. You improve your technique by transferring your power better. It takes a sequence of small movements to transfer your power more effectively. Let's pay attention to the sequence and timing of these throws. Notice how these quarterbacks start their arm motion before their front foot hits the ground. As the front foot touches, the shoulders are still close to the target and the arm has already gone through the windup and the elbow is transitioning forward. Your hips shouldn't just open as soon as you step. Staying closed until the arm is transitioned in the windup allows these quarterbacks to turn through the release of the throw, not before. You must make sure you start driving your elbow forward before rotating. Many quarterbacks have the tendency to turn their hips too early before their arm is ready to come forward and this causes a loss of power. One thing that has helped me is really feeling like I'm turning my chest away from my target and not reaching out of frame of my elbow. That means that my elbow never goes back behind my body, but I reach to right here to transition my arm through. If you just stay within your frame, but you turn back, you give yourself a lot of range of motion to use your big muscles through the throw. If your chest is already open when your front foot hits the ground, you will lose power and speed. This is also why coaches always stress to keep your front shoulder closed to the target. It helps you keep all that tension stored in your hips and core until you're ready to transfer it into your arm for the throw. This will naturally create hip shoulder dissociation, and when done properly, it will make you throw way farther. Another good throw feel is feeling like my hips are only halfway open at the release of the ball. Now this is a feel, which means my hips aren't actually halfway open, but it just feels like that so I can get the timing down of when to shoot my hips, when to transfer power, drive my elbow and throw. You see, all these events happen so quickly one after another that by feeling like you're releasing the ball with your hips halfway open, you're really going to be more in tune and be releasing the ball through your hip turn and not after your hip turn where you're going to leak out all your power. The timing of your hip turn to the release of the ball is the key to using your hips in your throw versus not using your hips in your throw. To fully understand the hip turn, let's look at the mechanics of two similar throw movements that are meant to generate the most possible speed, pitching and javelin throwing. Watching this clip of Shohei Otani, what sort of things do you notice? One, his arm is already coming forward when his front foot hits the ground. Two, his chest is closed to the target, so when his front foot strikes, he still has all of that range of motion to turn through the throw with his hips and core. And three, his front leg is stable and firm, allowing him to redirect all that force and transfer the power up. The point of this sequence of movements is to make your hand travel as fast as possible through the release to make the ball leave your hand at a high velocity. Throwing a football happens a lot faster and you have to be a little more versatile with how you set up and step into the throw. But regardless, these three timing elements remain the same, leading to the most efficient power transfer. The same goes for throwing the javelin. Obviously, the upper and lower body mechanics are much different, but you can still see how these three points are the same. The hand is moving forward when the front foot strikes, the chest is still closed upon the foot strike, and the front leg extends through the release, allowing all that speed and momentum to transfer up and into the arm. Now let's focus on how the front leg interacts with the ground. You should extend your front leg keeping your chest behind your front leg so you can rotate and get your back hip through the throw. Look closely at how stable the front leg is on these quarterbacks as they throw. It extends through the release and remains stable in the knee and hip through the release of the ball. Sinking into your front leg during the throwing motion is going to cause a loss of power. Try to keep your chest behind the front leg so you can rotate and get your back hip through the throw. The off arm also plays a vital role in the throw sequence. You must keep it tight as you rotate through the throw. A loose off arm leads to a loose front side, which likely to swing open and throw you out of sequence and cause a whole bunch of inconsistencies. Remember, the goal is to accelerate your hand through the release as fast as possible. So you must understand all of the different elements that allow this to happen. If your hand isn't moving faster than your shoulders are opening, then you aren't transferring your power correctly. This is how swinging open kills power, because it causes your arm to lag behind your body as you rotate, and you miss that moment of acceleration from your big muscles. There's a big difference between throwing a football and throwing a punch, but there's also some commonalities. In order to punch the hardest, you have to use your lower body to accelerate your hand into your target as fast as possible. If you just throw your hips and then let your arm lag through after, you're gonna lose all your power and punch like a weenie. Give me a four. 
Also, if you go to throw that right cross and you accelerate your arm through by trying to pull your front side, you're gonna also punch like a weenie. Give me a two. Oh. Two. Oh. However, if you keep your front side stable and you get your back hip through, that same punch is gonna have a lot more power behind it. Give me a two. Yep, give me a two. Give me a two. This is the same with the throwing motion. You have to rotate through the motion, right? Through the motion. You can't rotate before and you can't compromise your front side or else all your power is gonna leak out. The best way to practice your technique is by playing long toss. It's all about how you play long toss though. You're always forming habits, whether they're good or bad. Every single throw has to be with the fullest intention so you're forming good habits. This is called deliberate practice. Remember those three timing elements we talked about earlier in the video. And when you're playing long toss, try to feel yourself doing them correctly. One, your arm is transitioning in the windup as your front foot touches the ground. Two, your shoulders stay closed as your front foot touches the ground. Once your foot touches and the ball transitions, you can begin to rotate your hips and let your shoulders naturally follow. In three, your front leg must press through the release, allowing all that power to transfer up and keeping your chest behind your front leg so you can rotate. So when you're practicing, get throws in at every single trajectory and your focus should be using your full body to get the ball to leave your hand at a high velocity. When you do it correctly, it should feel effortless. So if you feel your arm struggling through the throwing motion, like it's not going as far as it should, you might be moving out of sequence. That's okay though. You have to keep practicing and trying to understand what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. It helps a lot if you record yourself throwing because then you're able to see the difference between what something feels like versus what it looks like. One of my favorite drills to throw farther is even feet. So you stand with your feet even and you make sure you turn all the way, let your arm transition and then drive your elbow and rotate through. All right, we talked about a bunch of separate parts of the throwing motion, but all these different parts are nothing if they're not working together. Staying connected is gonna improve your throw distance the fastest because if you're not staying connected, you're not maximizing the power that you already possess in your body to throw farther. There are other ways to increase your throw distance, like increasing your mobility or increasing your strength and speed, but those are always gonna fall secondary to improving your technique. Because like I said, if you're not using leverage in your throw correctly, all that power and all that strength and speed is gonna go to waste. That's exactly why linemen can't throw farther than quarterbacks, despite being like three times stronger. But at the end of the day, every quarterback is different and has a different set of needs to reach that next level of arm strength. That's why it's important that you know yourself, know your issues, know your tendencies, and work smarter to correct these and build good habits. Nobody can improve your throw distance for you. It's up to you to wrap your head around the concepts that I'm talking about in this video and increase your understanding for what you're trying to accomplish with your entire body throughout the throwing motion as well. Whether you agree or disagree with the things I'm talking about in this video, you know, this is all my personal experience and what I've learned trying to study the greats. And to be honest, in the process of making this video alone, I've increased my own throw distance by about seven yards just by tightening up my technique so I know it works. Please subscribe and like the video if it helped you out. I appreciate each and every one of you guys for tapping in with my channel, but that's all I got for you guys. Thank you once again, and I'll see you in the next video.